But what we'll talk about today in the agenda is, you know, as I said, what do I wish I'd known when I'd started trading Forex? Okay. And, and, and I'm going to focus on Forex, but actually, you know, most of these tips are pretty uh, applicable to, to basically whatever asset class you particularly like to trade. I appreciate some people here joining us will just focus on Forex, but there will be other people who like to trade stocks or indices or commodities or crypto. Okay. Uh, and what I would say is whilst we have a, an FX focus, uh, these tips are applicable to, to anybody who's, uh, who's trading and engaging in financial market tips. So as I said, I'm going to put, give you 10 great Forex trading tips that will uh, help you okay in your uh, own journey and as i said if you have uh, one or two of your own tips you know things that have helped you it'd be great to hear them put them in the uh, chat box i'll be very happy to share that and we we enjoy the interaction and as we talk about it as we go through those tips i'm going to just you know give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of you know insight and education about how you can utilize these 10 tips in your own journey okay we're, we are all on that journey all right we're all on that journey to trading mastery some of us you know we're right at the beginning of it some of us have been on it for for a good while but it's it's a, a constant journey okay and there's always elements and help and support that we can uh, we can take from other traders and hopefully that's what will this particular session will will help you with uh yourselves so uh, uh ronald great to have you here robert says you know he's been here for uh, two years okay trading joey says he's new to trading that's great thanks thanks very much for that that helps me just give a little bit of uh, understanding of who we have here in the room uh, and as i said also if you've got a tip or an idea please put it in there I'm, I'm very happy to share as i said i had to limit this to 10 because you know we're here for a short period of time but i could have gone for 20 50 or 100 okay because i've traded for a while and uh, you pick up an awful lot of uh, experience during that during that journey uh, so yeah as i said my name is paul i'm uh, primarily i look to trade fx indices and commodities myself uh, i like to trade trends on sort of longer time positions uh, and then i tend to be a mean reversion or reversal trader for short-term intraday uh, positions uh, and we're here with uh, admiral markets okay a, a broker that as you can see provides a, a wide range of financial instruments and uh, has uh, yeah is licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments uh, across the globe, providing very competitive spreads on the most popular trading products, uh, and also giving you the opportunity to engage with markets using either MT4 or MT5. If you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with your account representative, uh, and they'll be very happy to, to help and guide you. But today, let's talk about 10 forex trading tips that you can take away all right so as the slide says everyone has to start their trading journey somewhere okay and remember that every professional trader that you see now was at one point a, a total beginner as well all right so you know sometimes people look up to these you know these people experienced traders or the particular gurus etc but you have to remember everybody has to start somewhere all right and you know you might be thinking that you've only been trading for a very short period of time and that it's new and it's overwhelming and you're not really sure you know which direction to go in and you know i'm here to say that that's okay all right that's okay the the journey is long okay but there is some fantastic opportunities along that and you have to remember that everybody was a total beginner at one point but what you will find is that the smartest of the new traders will learn from their predecessors' successes and failures. Uh, I, you know, I am always very happy and open to talk about my successes as a trader, but also my failures, okay? You know, where I've you know, run into cul-de-sacs or where I've had obstacles to overcome and actually how I've had to, to adapt and change and, and overcome as part of my particular journey. So in this session, I'm going to talk through what I wish I'd known when you when I started trading, okay? Which will come in ten great tips to help you progress in your own journey. Uh, and you know that's a great question for all of you, just to think about. You know what what is the one thing you wish you'd known when you started trading? For those of you who you know, you know sort of like a few of you who've been trading for you know a couple of years, what is the one thing you'd wish you'd known when you started trading? It'd be interesting to see. Uh, uh, put that in the chat box and see what um, see what we can make of it, and I'll I'll very happily share that. And as I said, share some of my own experiences. So you know, let's talk about the the, the trading dream, shall we? Okay. So uh, you know, let's uh, let's cut to the chase. There are there are an awful lot of people who are attracted to trading because they see it as a an avenue or a vehicle to allow them to to sort of uh, experience a, a rather rich and luxurious lifestyle okay and so you know they they think that after a couple of years of trading that they will be uh, you know they'll be uh, living on their own private island getting to it flying to it by their own private jet so they can hang out on their uh, 
their own private yacht, living uh, life rather disgracefully, okay, getting old disgracefully, okay, as uh, uh, off the rich off the back of uh, Pip's profits from financial markets and, uh, and forex in particular, you know, and, and not everybody comes with that dream, but there is there are a lot of people who are, let's say, seduced by that particular dream or feel that that will be, you know, their particular journey. Whereas actually, you know, for, for many people, um, you know, the trading reality can actually become a rather uh, painful and uh, harsh experience. Okay, it becomes a very painful lesson because you know the you know, part of it is that you know their expectations you know are, are so out of whack with what the reality is. Okay, and when there is that gap between expectations and reality, it, and very very often that gap gets filled with pain and uh, hurt. Uh, and so uh, you know you see uh, um, yeah you see traders you know who who have a, a vision okay uh, that's very outcome driven. Okay, very outcome driven about you know how they want the, the, the private yacht and the private island, etc. But the reality is is very very different. It becomes a bit of a slog, and actually it uh, it becomes more like the uh, the sort of a shoveling muck, so to speak, in terms of the trading. So you know uh, if that has been your experience, okay, then you'd be great to to hear that. Maybe maybe you have, and maybe you know you're just completely new and you're just contemplating that. You know, and what I'd be saying is that part of this is about you know, managing your expectations, okay? And it's about setting yourself up to, to, to be able to succeed rather than setting yourself up to fail, okay? You know, we're very much, in the, let's say, in the present society, present, you know, uh, civilizations and the communities, people are, you know, they are uh, they're encouraged to set, you know, huge, big, massive, scary goals, okay, you know, for themselves, which is not a bad thing, okay? It's not necessarily a bad thing. However, you know, once again, it comes back to that understanding the kind of expectation management around that and being able to sort of draw it down into what your reality is like on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's a case of just being, yeah, just, you know, understanding the difference between that, uh, that you know, the, the sort of, you know, what the dream people are sold and what actually the sort of the, the reality can be come by. <laughs> So uh, Razzle says, you know, uh, his, my experience I'd like to share is I wish you knew about how to risk management as that's the key to success in trading. Great, a great uh, lesson you've learned there, Russell. I'm really pleased to hear it. Uh, Peter says, I wish I'd known about trading mindset psychology at the start. Didn't do anything on that when I started. Now I realize it's the most important thing. That's, that's great feedback, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, for your, uh, thank you for your experience there, okay? And that's, uh, that's a, a wonderful thing. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in our uh, session. Uh, Robert said, you know, the thing he learns is that is the market doesn't care about me. Uh, and that's, uh, that's absolutely right, Robert. You know, that, uh, that might be rather, uh, <laughs> some people might see that rather uh, nihilistic, but, it, you know, it's true, okay? The market is just so big and so huge doing its own thing. It doesn't really care about you, which is both a blessing and a curse, okay? It's a blessing and a curse. And, you know, as you learn and understand that, that can actually help you uh, enormously in your own trading journey. So with that in mind, and uh, with nicely timed from uh, Russell's comments, let's talk about one of the first tips, okay? And, th and this is actually the best tip, all right? And, uh, uh, and what I would say is, you know, if you only take one tip away and you're new to trading, you take this, okay? Namely that you are a risk manager first and a trader second, okay? Management of risk is the key single most important element to help you progress on your journey. Now, you know, the, the hedge fund trader, George Soros there, okay, he's a great quote from there is, my principle is to survive first and make money afterwards. And, you know, he's been very successful in markets. So, you know, if he says something like this, well, then, you know, my suggestion would be that you take it on board, okay, and build it into your own trading and business plan. You are a risk manager first, okay. Risk management is absolutely crucial. Uh, and you'll find that, you know, throughout the Trading Spotlight webinar series, if you look into the archives, you'll find there are, you know, a, a huge amount of um, videos, webinars, etc., by myself and also by my colleagues Marcus and Jens, talking about management of risk. Okay, if it's if it's something that's completely new to you and something you've not really sort of taken on board, my suggestion would be, you know, stop trading, okay, and go away. Watch those videos and learn, understand your risk management first and foremost. Okay, it's it is crucially important to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and here's a, you know, a great quote from, uh, you know, John Carter, you know, he's an American trader, he wrote a book, Mastering the Trade. And it's a great quote, you know, which says that amateur traders focus on how much money they can make on each trade. Professional traders focus on limiting risk and protecting capital. Professionals always take money away from amateurs. 
That is a, a great quote, but I, I want to caveat it with one thing, okay? People reading that might think that, you know, the definition of amateur traders is, is, a, is a retail trader working at home and a professional trader is somebody working for a bank or an institution. And, and I would be very clear to say that that is not the definition we are talking about here, okay? You know, and it, it, an amateur trader and professional trader is really, it's about their focus, okay, on limiting risk and protecting capital. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're trading a $200 account, $2,000 account, a $200 million dollar. Account, okay professional traders focus on limiting risk and protecting capital being a professional trader by this definition is really it's about your attitude okay it's about what you bring to your trading every single day okay and it's the case of they are always focusing on limiting risk and protecting capital and that is crucially important i can't stress enough to you ladies and gentlemen that being able to understand what risk management is and then employing it in every single trade and every single session and every single day of every single week of every single month of every single quarter of every single year of your trading journey is what will make a, a huge difference to your uh, prolonged success as a uh, as a trader uh, you know, and the root truth is very, uh, very simple like that. If you're not managing risk, you'll end up as roadkill. It is quite literally simple as that. You are a risk manager first and a trader second. So at its, at its, at its most basic, basic element for completely new traders, you know, the two things I'd be saying is, you know, you, you, you never ever trade with uh, out of stop loss on uh, any of your trades and you only ever risk a small portion of your uh, capital on any one particular trade. Okay, Even if you just do those two things to start with, that will make a big difference to your uh, to your trading success. Okay, but you know I, I risk I say it, I stress it again. Risk management is key, absolutely key. So um, uh, my second tip for everybody is that is quite simply is that everybody pays for their education. All right, uh, and what do I, what does what does Paul actually mean about that? Well, as the slide says, you know, work out what you need to educate yourself because everyone pays for their trading education one way or another. So this is this is my personal definition, okay? So this is a you know this is a personal definition here, okay? But it comes from years of experience of trading for myself and, and coaching and teaching other traders down the down the years. Is that uh, you know, you, my view would be that you have either you know a formal or an informal sort of uh, level of education. So you know, a formal education might be that you know you 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 know you are you pay to go and work with either you know a, a, tr a trading school or a trading educator or a mentor, okay, who will actually help you move you forward. Or an informal education is, you know, where you actually, you know, you do it yourself, okay, based upon the resources that are available to you. So you know, these days we have plenty of books, okay, great um, trading, uh, you know, uh, resources, okay, and, and fantastic webinars like this, okay, like these trading spotlight webinars that will actually help you, okay, educate you in your trading. What you're actually looking to do there is, you know, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not sort of, uh, I'm not, you know, uh, condoning either action, okay, a lot of that decision is going to have to be made upon based on your own, your lifestyle, your resources, okay, your, your time, uh, availability, etc. So you'll have to make a decision, are you going to go for a formal level of education, or will you be going for an informal level of education? Formal one, well, yes, there is going to be some cost involved, but you would hope that that actually shortens the timeline. An informal education is, you know, is, is free, but actually might take you longer to, to achieve the, the level of success that you wish. So it's a case of understanding where you are. But, but the important thing is everybody pays for their education. That is the key thing to recognize. You're either paying in money or you're paying in time. And that choice is yours, okay? And you know that choice will be defined by your own particular experiences and where you are in your, in your life at the moment. But, but just, just remember, everybody pays for their education. No, no one escapes that, okay? People like to think they can, but no one does. Everybody pays for their education. You know, and, and off the back of that is, you know, one of the final things is the is point three is you have to learn how to trade for yourself. And, and what does that what does that actually mean? Okay, how does that how are you defining that, Paul? What I mean by that is that you know you can get the you could get you know the the you know the best trading mentor in the in the world, or you could just you know watch you know um, weeks and months of YouTube um, videos, okay, on trading. But the reality is you have to take the trade, okay. 
you have to learn how to trade for yourself all right you can learn everything okay you can there's there's so much uh, resources out there that that traders can tap into you know much more than when i began many years ago okay back in the dark ages you know there is just huge huge amounts of resources available to traders but the reality is you have to learn how to trade for yourself okay and part of that is to do with that you know we are all different okay we are all different we all have our own character personality and beliefs and your trading will have to to sort of represent that all right and and when your personality and beliefs are in alignment with you know your trading style that is when you'll actually generate the the sort of most progression in your uh, in your trading journey you know there are you can you know the, the, there is a uh, let's say there is a in the in the present climate there is a, 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 a let's say a kind of a focus or maybe even a fashion that people want to for example they just want to trade using a um, trade using robots okay they just want to you know they just think they can buy a robot and then just plug it into their metatrader and that effectively will turn their laptop into an automatic you know atm cash machine I, I, I wish it was that easy, ladies and gentlemen, but the truth is it isn't, okay? You, you have to learn how to trade for yourself. Now, some people will go down the full way of being a you know, fully discretionary trader. Some people may want to have some assisted intelligence, okay, from particular uh, um, trading algos. Other people might wish to go down the, the complete algo route. It's Part of it is, once again, is about your resources, your personality, your experience, where you are in your life. But even if you want to go down the algo route, you have to learn how to trade for yourself. There is no escape in that, ladies and gentlemen, okay? You have to learn how to trade for yourself. And we're going to come back to that in a later tip on a, uh, on a different term, uh, on a, yeah, from, a, from a different viewpoint. And, uh, you know, with that, you know, trading tip four is you have to learn to walk before you can run, okay? And, and that, you know, that might be quite... A glib platitude for me to be able to say, but it is true. I, you know, I see people who, you know, if we talked right at the start about uh, people who are managing expectations uh, and people's expectations, you know, are, are totally out of whack with what they're uh, capable of achieving. Uh, and so invariably, they, you know, they try and race towards uh, actually achieving trading mastery. Whereas actually uh, trading mastery takes years. Okay. There's no, there's no shortcuts there. It, it will take years of your life to achieve it. Uh, you have to learn how to walk before you can run. And invariably, you know, the people, especially I have to say kind of, you know, young men that uh, I come across, they, uh, they, they struggle with that because you know, very they're, they're impatient. They're excited. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're full of purpose and vigor and they want to get engaged in trading and they want to sort of, you know, make progress, uh, quick progression. However, the, the truth of the matter is that you know, it's a process. Trading mastery is a process and it's about understanding that process. And it's about basically going through almost like through the steps of that before you can actually believe to sort of achieve the, you know, that trading mastery. And so it is very much a case of learning to walk before you can run. And uh, one of the places I see this uh, frequently, okay, with, with new traders is, you know, you have to learn to walk before you can run, which means you have to take time scaling up your position size. What we find is that traders will start out, they'll start trading, you know, they'll start tr trading with on their demo account, then they'll transition across to, to trading very, very small okay, positions in a live account because it gives them the opportunity to engage with markets and they learn an awful lot about trading, about financial markets, about themselves. But because you know, they have, uh, let's say, goals or a particular drivers, external drivers that are invariably uh, very, uh, um, very, you know, very dear to them, but what it does do is that once they start to have just a little bit of success as a trader, you see them starting to scale up their position size, okay? And suddenly their position size is, going, is, is being 10 times what it, what it is they, they're used to because invariably they, you know, they want to achieve an element of financial independence or success, you know, whatever that might be. So they scale up far too fast, okay? And then invariably it goes wrong and it goes wrong badly for them and they run into a uh, into a few personal uh, um, challenges because they're not ready to to sort of be trading at that you know at that particular uh, um, at that particular size so uh, henrik says you know you mean to start from a uh, a small position uh, and that's that's it you know you just take your time you know we start so you said right at the start you're a risk manager first so you know when you're transitioning across to live trading start with a very very small position that's probably the smallest you can begin with and just find yourself get yourself into the groove of being able to spot the trade okay you know set the trade manage the trade exit the trade debrief the trade 
get yourself into your processes and routines, and then just let your scaling up of your position size happen organically, okay? Don't force it because invariably, like anything in life, the more you force it, the more it kind of rebounds back, um, rebounds back at you. Russell says, absolutely true. Thanks for sharing. You're absolutely welcome, Razzle. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that this is resonating with you and hitting home, okay? And for everybody, hopefully, that, you know, as you go through your journey, you'll realize these as a tips. And as I said, we're focusing on Forex, but really they are applicable to any style of trading. And the fifth one is get yourself a mentor, okay? Because everybody needs one, all right? Uh, you know, everybody needs their own little Yoda, all right? Or everybody needs their own Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid, okay? Getting yourself a mentor. Now, once again, once again, this comes down to, you know, a little bit of personal choice and, you know, where you are and where you particularly, uh, you know, are in terms of availability of time and resources. But, you know, what I find and see is that, uh, you know, traders, especially private traders who are working from home in, in their own little bubble, so to speak, this was long before uh, the time of COVID, you're in your own little bubble trading, working away means that invariably, you know, sometimes you don't have the uh, opportunity to see your own mistakes. You're, you're having to learn in a very slow and painful process, whereas actually having a, a mentor can help you speed you up towards that journey. You know, a mentor might not make you an overnight success as a trader, but what they will do is they will shorten that timeline, okay, and, and, and help you avoid some of the cul-de-sacs that all traders tend to go down, okay, and help you keep you on the, the, the straight and narrow. And the truth of the matter is, you know, I, you know, I have, you know, you had mentors throughout my own trading career, and, you know, everybody needs their own Yoda from time to time. Everybody needs their own Mr. Miyagi, because sometimes when you're so engaged in trading, you, you, know, you lose sight, okay, you lose sight of the woods from the trees, okay, and, you, and having a mentor there act as a sounding board, as an objective uh, viewer of your behavior and of your, you know, of your, uh, um, uh, actions, you know, that can be enormously beneficial for you in terms of helping you uh, make your uh, progression. And, and these days, you know, these days, uh, you know, uh, th there are wide ranges of mentorships from um, being able to, yes, have a, a formal mentor, which, you know, you, you, you employ through to just being part of some great networks some great sort of uh, um, uh, online networks that allow you to, to basically have a, almost like a kind of a online buddy, buddy relationship. And uh, I know that here at Admiral Marcus in the trading spotlight, you know, we have the, uh, the traders yard facility here where you can come and join us. And my friends, Marcus and uh, Jens, they're, you know, they're exceptionally good on that every day. They're posting great stuff they're out of you know to try and help other traders so it, you know there's there is these days you have a very broad spectrum in terms of you know where you can uh, help and work with and engage with a with a with a mentor and henrik says yeah they are expensive well you know as i said there is there are many ways okay there's a complete spectrum of it but what we look at it you know just as, a, as an aside you know in terms of you know working with mentors is a case of uh, you know most people know what they need to do. Okay. You know, you know, you need to watch less TV. You need, you need to exercise more, to sleep more, to drink less, to eat, you know, healthy, uh, healthy fruit and vegetables. Everybody knows that. Okay. Everybody knows that, but invariably lots of people do not do that. Okay. And the reason is, is because they don't have somebody, whether that be a coach or a mentor to, to hold them accountable. Okay. To provide them that level of accountability. Uh, and that's the same for trading, okay? And that's the first same for trading, especially for traders who perhaps struggle with, you know, following their rules, okay? Sometimes having that external accountability can actually help. And as I said, you know, that doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be a formal paid mentor. That might be somebody who you find from, you know, an online or, you know, basically a networking group and you actually work as a buddy buddy, almost kind of like online mentoring each other, okay? Then, you know, so you're helping each other, but without uh, having any kind of uh, a additional resource to uh, require to, to help. And, and, you know, sometimes helping someone else helps you become better as a trader yourself. And uh, what is important, okay, is, uh, you know, a, a mentor should help you develop your own style, okay, and, uh, and stop you from making a, a trading faux pas or a bit of a fashion faux pas. And, you know, uh, this is a personal, all right, this is a, you know, a personal um, view point of it, okay. So, um, you know, when I sit in front of, you know, a room of, you know, a, a hundred people, okay, you know, talking about trading at conferences, etc., 
you know, what I talk about is that it is important to, to be able to develop your own style. I said a bit earlier on that, you know, once you understand your, your personality, your beliefs, okay, then, you know, you'd be able to trade in line with that. So, you know, when, as I said, if I talk at a conference for hundred people, you know, I, I say that everybody has to develop their own style, but you know, we have to follow some rules. Okay. So if I'm in a conference room with a hundred traders in there, the reality is that they will follow some social rules. Okay. So they'll probably have shoes on, they'll have trousers on, they'll have a top on. Okay. So they have, they have, they are, they're following the rules, but no two people are wearing the same shoes, the same trousers, the same top. Everybody has their own style. Okay. Some people are more stylish than others. That's not for me to comment, I can assure you. However, in trading, it's the same. You can follow the rules, you can have the same ideas, you can trade the same well, but you will have your own style, okay? Your own style that is just a little bit different, okay? Because it's it, you, it reflects you. And a good mentor should help you, okay? Help you develop your own style, help you just refine it, okay? And ensure what works particularly for you, um, rather than ending up like that, chap from a second uh, from a second from the left okay who's made a rather big fashion faux pas and that's what you know a, a good mentor should stop you from making those faux pas okay and that's that's about working to to, to help you with that And if you don't believe me, well, you know, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who is, uh, you know, he's one of, the, one of the original Market Wizards books, okay, you know, a bit of a professional hero of mine, um, you know, a fantastic trader, supremely, uh, you know, effective, you know, uh, he pays Tony Robbins, okay, the, uh, the coach and inspirational speaker in America, he pays him over a million dollars a year to, to help mentor him, okay, so, you know, you have to question, you know, a man there, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who has vast experience, vast success, you know, immense financial success, personal success, professional success, and yet he still has mentors and coaches to help him, okay? And that's the thing, you look at any of those kind of top people, performance people, in any kind of performance environment, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a trader or a sports person or a fighter pilot, you know, they have people around them that basically help get them to the top and help them maintain at their particular, uh, at their particular level of performance. Uh, so Henrik says, could you tell something about my strategy? Well, you know, a good, a good mentor, good coach should be able to look at your strategy and start to basically help you refine it and guide it to a, to a better place. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to touch on that in a couple of, uh, in a couple of slides, Henrik. So uh, stay with us. So up to top six. Well, you know, here's another great tip, have a plan and keep great trading records. Okay. And, and those of you who know me, those of you who see me speaking across the, the kind of the, the, the spectrum, it, it, you'll know I talk a great deal about making sure that you have a plan and that you keep great trading records. Okay. This is what will help you develop as a trader faster than anything else. Okay. So keep great trading records and then analyze them to accelerate your trading progress. And, you know, sometimes people say to me, you know, well, Paul, I don't need to keep records. You know, MetaTrader keeps a record of uh, you know, all my trades. That's, that's all I need to do. No, is the word to that, okay? What you need to do is you need to keep your own trade journal, okay? You need to keep your own trading spreadsheet, okay? You also need to sort of grade yourself on your trades and how your performance and how your execution of your trades. And I can assure you, you know, going through and recording those trades and then go back and reviewing them every day, every week, every month, every quarter, that will help accelerate your uh, progression as a trader. All right. When I uh, when I first started off, I used to, you know, I'd trade the early morning session, okay, and then I would basically print off the charts, okay, and pull out my journal and go to a coffee shop for an hour and sit in the more late morning and sit and just annotate on my charts, write up my journal, what was the results, okay, how did I feel, what did I learn for the trade, every single trade, okay, you know, every single trade, and then at the end of the week, I would go back and review them all end of the month, I'd go back and review them all. And every time you do that, every time you review that, okay, you're just, you're just cementing the good learning, okay? You're cementing the good learning and you also start to identify the mistakes that you repeatedly make so you can focus, okay, on either eradicating them or, or mitigating them as much as possible. Uh, here's one that is, uh, you know, just a kind of a little bit of insight for, uh, yeah, um, you know, for those traders trading Forex, but, you know, any, any particular asset class or instrument is that lots of private traders will use technical analysis as their decision making tool. And, and that's absolutely fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay. It's, it's about, there is no perfection. 
and it is about finding a way that you can actually just make a simple decision. All right. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to be sat on the sidelines? That's it. When you boil trailing down, trading down to it, you're just looking to have a simple way that allows you to make that decision. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit on the sidelines? That's it. Okay. We all overcomplicate it. Okay. My, myself included. I, you know, I would include myself in that. Okay. So lots of people use technical analysis as their decision-making tool because they believe it to be simple. They believe it to be very visual, okay? And they can make a decision. And that is absolutely fine, okay? That is absolutely fine. If we're just here to find a decision-making tool. But what new traders sometimes don't realize is that, you know, you can have the most beautiful technical setups. You can have the most beautiful candlesticks or patterns or charts. However, when big fundamental news comes in, especially if it is different from expectation, that news, okay, will always trump your technical analysis pattern, all right? That will always change the picture, okay? That will always change the picture. That will always make a difference, okay? So, you know, there's, it might be formal news, okay? So something like non-farm payrolls, okay, or an interest rate decision, okay? Formal economic news, which you should be looking at on the calendar might come in, or maybe it's an informal news, okay? Maybe there's a geopolitical event that has occurred, okay? Maybe there's, you know, here in 2020, maybe, you know, there's, there's elements of, you know, the COVID, for example, that just trumped all of the technicals, okay, and made the markets crash back in March because the news would trump the technicals like that, okay? So that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, that, you know, tech analysis certainly doesn't, um, you know, is that, uh, is that, you know, the, uh, it doesn't mean that just basically tech analysis doesn't work. What it means is that you use your system but you have to be prepared to adapt and overcome when big major news comes in and actually takes out your particular uh, um, takes out your particular trade idea because as that news comes into the market, the market reacts and the market might change its view and direction and bias because of that. And uh, lesson eight here, okay, tap here. And this is, you know, kind of on the flip side of it, all right? On the, maybe the flip side of what we just talked about is uh, less is more, okay? Less is more. Keep it simple. So I very often get sent charts, okay, like this one from, you know, from a trader who is struggling because they're struggling to really have a trading idea. They don't really know how to, to make a decision and they're feeling overwhelmed, okay? And, you know, I look at the chart and there might be, you know, five to 10 different moving averages. There's all sorts of different indicators. There's all sorts of different oscillators being uh, em employed, okay? And what that trader has done is that they think that because they're struggling to, to make a decision, whether to be a buyer, to be a seller, or to sit on their hands, they think that one more indicator, one more piece of data, one more piece of information is gonna help them, okay, to make that decision. And in fact, actually, for the most part, it doesn't, it just, complicates the matter it just basically overwhelms them and then invariably it kind of you know it, it just to get intimidated and so they either they either are like a they're like a deer in a headlights okay where they're scared and won't make any decision or, or they're just like a wild rabbit running everywhere mashing keys praying taking trades okay so what i say to people is less is more all right keep it simple you know and, and i you know i've had to learn that lesson myself okay in that it's effectively you know you know less is more in terms of having how your charts are displayed okay less information is is better but also in terms of the 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 sort of the taking of the trades okay you have to remember that it's about taking you know quality trades rather than quantity of trades you know and this as I said, it links into kind of your style of trading. And you have to think about, well, you know, what type of trader are you? You know, are you Rambo or are you the sniper as a trader, right? You know, I see lots of uh, trader Rambos, okay, who literally are firing off trades like Rambo fires off bullets. Um, but, you know, it, it looks great on the screen, okay, but actually it achieves very, very little. Or are you at the other end, okay, where a sniper, whereas actually a sniper is, is sat there and is waiting it's waiting for the target to come for them in the same way that a sniper trader is waiting for the trade to come to them. Okay. It's as I said a bit earlier, it's about, you don't never want to try and force your trades. You know, anything in life that you try and force there tends to be resistance. Okay. It's about understanding you know, what it is you're looking for and letting the trade come to you. And it's also true that over trading will destroy you as a trader, you know, keep your, keep your powder dry, save your bullets. Okay. Your trades, 
for the high probability shot. All right. And this comes back to you know, one of those earlier ones about you know, making sure you keep good records. Because if you're keeping good records, you start to work out which are the setups that help you, which are the setups that actually work for you. And then once you get clear on that, well, then, you know, you bec it becomes easier to become a sniper and just wait for your setup rather than shooting off trades left, right, and center, okay? I've seen plenty of traders do it, all right? We've all done it, okay, at some point uh, early on in our trading career. But, you know, Rambo looks great at a Hollywood screen, but the reality is you, you want it to be working towards becoming a sniper as a trader. So Russell says, yep, yeah, this is right. Naked trading is better, but everyone is different. I prefer trading price action with proper risk management. Absolutely spot on, Russell, okay? You know, just trading price action with proper risk management. It's nice. It's simple. You can make that decision. And that's, that's, you know, that's what new traders sometimes need to learn. And, and invariably, invariably, many of them learn the hard way, okay? But actually, less is more. And here's uh, tip number nine, ladies and gentlemen. And tip number nine, ladies and gentlemen, is get comfortable being wrong, okay? Get comfortable being wrong because you're going to be wrong many times as a trader and that's okay, all right? And that's okay. Part of this is about the conditioning that we all receive from, from society and from the education system, okay? You know, you, you start going to school when you're, I don't know, four or five years and then you leave, you know, at, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, depending upon how far you go through the education system. But you will all remember yourself, you know, if you're in school, you know, if you're in primary school, if you got nine out of 10 right in the, in the uh, test, well, then invariably, you know, you were at the top of the class and everybody thought you were great. If you got three out of 10 in the test, well, you know, you were uh, not the, the teacher's favorite, okay? And invariably, there was some trouble with that. And so, you know, people are conditioned to, to wanting to be right, okay? And, and I can say this about uh, male men traders is that, you know, men, they hate being wrong and they hate losing money, okay? And as a, if you're going to be a trader, you're going to experience that you're going to be wrong and you're going to make, lose money as, as part of your trading procession and journey. That is just part of the game, okay? You can't, you can't get in a boxing ring, okay, and think that only you will throw punches and you'll never get any punches thrown at you. And it's the same with trading, okay? You can't get into a trade and think every trade will be a winner and you'll never have a losing trade, okay? That is just, that is just you know, you're in denial there. That's just not terribly clever or smart way to, to think about your uh, trading. So what you have to realize is that, you know, you have to get comfortable being wrong, because you're going to be wrong because markets change. You know, we just talked there about how there can be a bit of news comes out and changes the, the complete complexion of the, of the asset that you were looking at. And, and that happens. Okay. But you know, what we find is that, you know, it, it's easier to be wrong. Okay. If you are, as I said earlier, if you're managing risk accordingly, if you're only risking a small portion of uh, your capital on a trade, when you're wrong, it doesn't actually, you know, the, the emotional pain is, is much less. Okay. Very often what I find is that, you know, traders, they, uh, they risk far too much. They're over trading, they're risking far too much. And invariably, you know, it means that when they are wrong, it, the emotional pain of that, as well as the financial, maybe physical pain, it's too much. Okay. And it causes them particular problems. It should never be that. It should never be that, you know, your trading career should, you know, should rest on the outcome of one trade. Okay. It's about you being able to be comfortable being wrong. And if, remember, if you've been following tip six to keep great records and review, well, then when you are wrong, you'll learn why was I wrong, okay? Well, you know, all the particular mistakes I keep repeating. And one, if you recognize that particular trend in yourself, well, then you can start to put tactics in place to, to, to help you, okay? So remember, get comfortable being wrong. It's, it's okay, okay? It says nothing about you. And one of the ways I can help suggest you do that is that you focus on the quality of your trades, not the outcome. Lots of new traders, they focus on the outcome. They want their, you know, they're, they're talking about the trade in terms of, you know, if it's a winning trade, they're feeling great. If it's a losing trade, they're feeling terrible. Okay. They have now on an emotional roller coaster. Okay. That is no way to live your life. And it's certainly no way to live as a trader. What you want to do is focus on the quality of your trades, okay? And what I say to traders is that, you know, it's three elements in place, okay? If you've planned your trade, traded your plan, and managed your risk accordingly, then that is actually a successful trade. Because once a trade is triggered, you, you actually have very little control over the outcome of the trade. We all want winning trades. We all don't particularly like losing trades. But you have to realize it's the give and take 
It's the give and take of trading and engaging in markets, right? So if you start to focus on the quality of your trades, not the outcome of your trades, it allows you okay to get comfortable with being wrong. And you have to remember, you are not your losing trades, okay? You having a losing trade or having a string of losing trades says nothing about you as a, as a human being, okay? It's, it's, you know, some people, they get into a bit of a pit of despair, okay? If they've had a few losing trades on the trot. Nobody likes them but it is part of the gig and you are not your losing trades. Okay. You still have worth as a, as a human being. And finally tip 10 is it takes longer than you imagine. All right. So have patience and enjoy the journey. It going to a point of trading mastery is it does take much longer than people imagine. Okay. They want to have it done in a couple of months. The reality is it might take you a couple of years, for some people, it might take a couple of decades. You know, everybody's different. Everybody's journey is, is very, very different. But what I can help or suggest to you is to have some patience, have some compassion for yourself, and, and to actually enjoy the journey. You, you are learning great skills here, okay? Great skills that will help you enormously, weirdly, not just in trading, but also in understanding yourself, managing yourself, mastering yourself, also, you know, great trades and understanding having that kind of financial education, which you may pass on to, to friends, family, other people that will help. You've got to really, as I say, enjoy the journey. And it, you know, it helps to enjoy the journey when you're all very, you know, when you're, uh, when you're not really forcing it to be the, the very best possible winner that you uh, to win on every single trade. You know, it's a, it's a case of understanding that, you know, it's a case of understanding this journey will take you as long as it as long as it needs to take okay and so you need to set yourself goals and visions accordingly okay and the reason being is that you know that allows you to effectively to to, to come from a from a place of, of calmness and patience if you're trying to force your trades if you're trying to drive towards an outcome i can assure you as a trader that's not a great place to be coming from when it comes to making terrible uh, to making good trading decisions and that's something you have to take on board that uh, that you know that uh, yeah that you will learn and take as part of the journey so there you go ladies and gentlemen you're right in conclusions okay you're a risk manager first and a trader second everybody pays for their education in one way or another you have to learn how to trade for yourself get a mentor have a plan and keep great records of your trades Financial media, people look after it, but it comes down to you having to make your own decisions. And part of that is fundamentals will trump technicals when new news comes into, new data, new news comes into the uh, market. Keep it simple and be comfortable being wrong, okay? It says nothing about you. And focus on the quality of your decisions, not the outcomes of your trade. And have some patience and enjoy the journey, ladies and gentlemen. So don't forget to join us next time, okay, when we have my colleague Marcus will be talking about how to use a trading simulator to test strategies. And he'll be talking about what's a trading simulator, how to find a strategy, and how you can test your own particular strategy. That's on this Wednesday, 2 p.m. London time, 16th of October. You can check your inbox in the, uh, the webinar link or head over to the Admiral Markets website to, to register for that uh, session. And as, uh, as always, you know, what you'll find is that, you know, uh, for those of you who want more support, you want help, you want to actually be around good traders and have uh, elements of mentorship, well, you can join the Trading Spotlight community on Traders Yard. You'll see my uh, colleagues there, Marx and Jens, they post some great stuff on there. I'm going to be in there for the rest of the afternoon. So if you've got questions about your trading or if you want to have a look at something, well, then you can just join us on Traders Yard. And as you can see there, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash three one two you'll find as always lots of analysis and education free educational resources there on the admiralmarkets.com website which so i would uh, advise you go and uh, take a, a look at that and as always if you want to contact us if you want to give us uh, some feedback or if you have questions or maybe you even have ideas for what you'd like us to cover in the future well you can contact us email global at admiralmarkets.com you can always see us on youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets, and you can look at us on facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. So I hope you found that uh, uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's given you just a little bit of uh, insight into, uh, into you know, 
what I wish I'd known when I'd started. And so I share it with you and hopefully you'll take that on board and you'll start to build that into your own uh, good ideas and things of how to do it. So uh, Peter says, great tips. Thank you, Paul. You're very welcome. Russell says, thanks for the good information. I follow you. I apologize if I've corrected that, spelled that wrong. Thanks for today. Robert says, very good. Thanks, Paul. You can see there that my assistant has put in a link to Traders Yard. You're very welcome to come and join us. Uh, Opera says, thank you very much. David says, uh, you know, he wants to work towards opening an account. And you are said, if you're fine, if you get in touch with your account representatives at Admiral Markets, they'll be very happy to help guide you there. So thanks very much for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, been a pleasure to, to speak with you. I hope you have a fantastic trading week and I wish you all the best success in your own endeavors. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Many thanks.